In this episode of Film Stock Reviews, I'm reviewing the Santa Claus 3, The Escape Clause. The Santa Claus 3, The Escape Clause is really interesting as a third movie because it tells the story of Scott Calvin Santa, who has his in-laws, played by Anne Margaret and Alan Arkin, coming for a visit to the North Pole. They play Carol's parents. Not only that, Carol is pregnant with their first child. And the villain in this is Jack Frost, played by Martin Short. You get Tim Allen and Martin Short together, you know it's going to be a fun, fun movie. Jack Frost has a motive, and that motive is taking over the North Pole. So, how can you take over the North Pole? Well, kind of Jack Frost, in a way, kind of puts a spell where he kind of makes Santa lose his title of being Santa Claus. There is time travel in this, or we go to a scene where somehow Martin Short's character, Jack Frost, puts on the coat and becomes Santa Claus. This movie is very different than what you think it could be. And the reason I say that is because it's just over the top and different. Somehow, um, Curtis the Elf, played by Spencer Breslin, kind of reveals the escape clause where we see uh, Jack Frost sneak into the hall of snow globes and steal one of S Scott's containing as Santa. And if Scott holds the globe and he wishes to have never been Santa at all, it transforms everything. So Jack Frost kind of, you know, tricks Scott, Calvin, Santa into holding and saying that. And then all of a sudden he will go back in time and undo everything he did and was as Santa, but he still remembers he was Santa Claus. And when Lucy the uh, discovers this, the little uh, the niece, I believe, to Scott, uh, Frost freezes her parents and locks her up in a closet. He then orchestrates situations that make Scott think he must resign to make things better. Uh, Bernard is not in this at all. David Crumholz does not reprise his role as Bernard from the first two films. We have Spencer Breslin as Curtis. Not only that, while everything is going around to, you know, certain things, uh, the aspect of the time jump and the time travel is interesting because we go back to 1994 where we find Scott outside and kind of... Jack Frost kind of tricks Scott Calvin into invoking the escape clause and where they're sent back to 1994. Uh, I feel like there are certain things in this that could have been done differently. The whole aspect in the song and dance at the end with North Pole, North Pole with the New York, New York kind of thing where, you know, it's just didn't work at all. And seeing the aspect of the Santa Claus 3 happen should have waited a little bit more. Uh, this movie was released November 3rd, 2006. Runs for a total of 92 minutes long. Has a budget of, I believe, was a small budget. Didn't say what it was, but it grossed $110 million at the box office worldwide. So it was a not a big hit at all, but it didn't feel like it should have been a Santa Claus movie. I mean, you just call it a Santa Claus 3, it probably would have been a better film, but it just didn't feel that aspect. Of course, these films are really interesting because you always have to have a villain to Santa. Who could that villain be? Well, that's Martin Short's character as Jack Frost. Martin Short was funny, but it just felt like Martin Short playing Martin Short in this. Tim Allen is great as Santa, but it's really interesting. Now, at the end of this, we see that uh, Carol and Scott have a son named Buddy Claus. Now, the events of this film go into the Disney Plus series, The Santa Clauses, which premiered November 16th, 2022. We get a whole aspect of how Scott became Santa Claus and everything, and the whole timeline where he has kids now, and so many later years in the future, Carol and is in there as well. It's fun and it's interesting, but it's very different than what this movie is. And I feel like they noticed that this movie wasn't a big hit, so they made the TV series, or the mini-series for that matter. I'll leave a link to my reviews for that in the description box below. You can check that out. 
For me, the Santa Claus 3, the escape clause, gets one out of five stars. So let me know in the comment section below what you thought about the Santa Claus 3, the escape clause. Did you like it? Did you not like it? What did you think of it? What did you think about Martin Short playing Jack Frost, the villain in this? Did you like them going back to the original concept of the idea of the movie in 1994, where we see everything transpire and happen? What did you think about Jack Frost becoming Santa Claus for that little bit in the movie? And what was your favorite scene and what was your least favorite scene in this movie? And did you like the ending or do you think that it could have been a little bit different? And did you miss Bernard in this movie? Let me know in the comment section below about all the questions I just asked. And also let me know what rating you would give the Santa Claus 3, the escape clause. And I'll see you all in the next review video. And thank you for tuning in. Thank you.